If you ask somebody to name a type of wetland, they almost always answer with a wetland that holds water all year. A lake, a river, or maybe even a swamp. But there are ephemeral wetlands that flood in the winter and spring and go dry during the summer. These temporary ponds are called vernal pools, and they are vital to the survival of a wide range of amphibians, insects, and even crustaceans. A while back, Shannon talked to Tom Biebighauser on the importance of vernal pools on an episode of the Backyard Ecology podcast. Let's listen in and see what Tom had to say about these fascinating wetlands. Some of our listeners may not know what we're talking about with vernal pools, so can you kind of describe what that is? Because there are so many different types of wetlands, and Today, we want to really concentrate more on those vernal pools because we're recording this in mid to late January, and this is vernal pool time. This is the time when they really start to get exciting. You're right. Well, a vernal pool is a special kind of wetland. It's a wetland that fills with snow melt and rain during the spring, and then by the end of the summer, it generally goes dry. Now, I've worked as a biologist for a long time, and I remember early in my career seeing vernal pools and thinking, well, those aren't very good looking wetlands. After all, they go dry. Mm -hmm. And that's what most people thought. If a wetland goes dry, how can it have any value? But maybe you've seen these when you're driving uh, in the countryside, you'll see part of a farmer's field that's holding water in the spring. And then you'll come back when the crops are growing and it's dry. You were probably looking at a vernal pool that was natural, but now it's been drained. Now these vernal pools are often quite shallow, uh, most of them are under a foot and a half deep, and they can be quite small. You know, most of them are not even a quarter acre in size. In fact, most vernal pools that I visit that are natural really aren't any larger than your living room. But oh, are they full of life. But what we learned over the years is that these temporary puddles of water are just full of life. And a vernal pool, by definition, does not contain fish. If we want fish to live in a wetland, and fish are good to have in many wetlands, the wetland needs to hold water all year. But if we want a vernal pool and all the life that lives in a vernal pool, we don't want fish in it. So if that vernal pool or that ephemeral wetland goes dry once in a while, it can't support the fish, but it can support this diversity of animals that we're gonna be talking about today. Yeah, and exactly what you said about that idea of if the wetland goes dry, how can it be a good wetland? That's why I never really, up until about 10 years or so ago, paid much attention to vernal pools and thought they were just kind of there. But for, for that very reason, I kind of had that same bias. And then I had the opportunity to do some research with some students. And oh my gosh, yes. like you said, it was just, it was amazing what yeah. all we found there. Oh, if you want to hold students' attention, bring them to a vernal pool, give them a dip net, and you wouldn't believe what they will capture. Because vernal pools don't contain fish, they do contain this wide diversity of animals. I mean, I think of all the frogs that you see that are breeding in a vernal pool. Uh, we see wood frogs in vernal pools. We see this toad that we call the spade foot. It's capable of burrowing into the ground great distances. Gray tree frogs will breed in vernal pools. Then we have all the salamanders, and the list goes on and on. We have spotted salamanders, we have marbled salamanders, blue spotted salamanders, Jefferson salamanders, four toed salamanders, red spotted newts, tiger salamanders. I mean, you get the point. There's a lot of salamanders that use these vernal pools. Mm -hmm. And they're in there because when they enter the vernal pool to lay their eggs, then they don't get eaten by fish and their eggs can hatch and their larvae can grow up, and more than likely, uh, the predation won't be as great. So they can reproduce and emerge and uh, get onto dry land and live the rest of their life cycle. But because a vernal pool is so full of life, uh, we often see snakes like garter snakes, the eastern garter snake, maybe the red belly snake, the ring neck snake, and they're hunting the frogs and the toads and the salamanders. Now, uh, we have one vernal pool on our farm that supports Fowler's toads and American toads. And in the spring, we hear this long, beautiful trill, and that's the breeding call of the male. And they will only successfully breed in vernal pools, again, because their eggs and their larvae don't get eaten by fish. Now, I love fish, 
And on our farm, we have one large pond, and this large pond has fish in it. When the grandchildren come over, we go fishing in the farm pond, but then we hike up to the top of the ridge, and that's where we catch the frogs and the toads and the salamanders in the vernal pond. So really, wetlands are different from each other. We have those that hold water all year. We have those that don't. And the vernal pool is one of these specialized wetlands, and we've lost so many of them to drainage. And I'll be talking about that in a few minutes. And yeah, I mean, most people that I've met, they may have vernal pools on their property, but they don't realize it because like you said, it's only wet for part of the year. But yeah, there's so, and it may be a very small thing, but there's so much that's there. And like the fairy shrimp was one that really surprised me. Yes. And yeah, that was really fun because the first time I saw them was when I was working with these students and we were doing wood frog egg mass surveys. The fairy shrimp is an indicator that you are looking at a vernal pool. And just like the wood frog is an indicator, because this is where they can breed uh, successfully. So they really are just a fascinating place. And maybe, okay, we're in Kentucky, and I really like the eastern box turtle. That's one of my favorite turtles. Mm -hmm. And during the summer, you will find the box turtle burrowed into the mud of a vernal pool. And they're keeping cool, and they're also finding lots of things to eat in a vernal pool. And we'll also find other species of turtles. We're going to find the wood turtle using vernal pools and the spotted turtle. And we'll even find rare turtle species like the Blandings turtle using it and the bog turtle using these vernal pools. So these vernal pools are really special. It's really fun to see them. And, you know, if you're thinking, well, I don't know if I can find a vernal pool. Well, the best way to find a vernal pool is to drive around the countryside in the spring with your windows rolled down and you'll hear the vernal pool. Well, how do you hear a vernal pool? It's all the frogs and the toads that are calling in the spring. And more than likely, they'll be calling from a vernal pool. Pretty amazing. Yeah, that's one of the ways I, go, I look for them too. And, or if I know where they are at, then I've got to always roll down the windows before I get to that spot during that time of year because I've got to listen to them. It's just deafening sometimes. Yes. And also we find many dragonflies using these vernal pools. We have this huge dragonfly called the swamp darner. And I've seen these near vernal pools. And you think a bird is coming close to you, but it's just a big dragonfly. And then we also have the wandering glider. And this is a dragonfly that will breed in a vernal pool. And then it will migrate up to 11,000 miles. Wow. Could you think of a dragonfly flying 11,000 miles? It's just, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So vernal pools are special habitats. Vernal pools are packed with life. And if you would like to create or restore a vernal pool on your property, Tom has an excellent book, Wetland Restoration and Construction, a technical guide that will walk you through the process step by step. I will put a link to it, as well as a link to the full podcast this clip was taken from in the description. Tom talked about one of the indicator species for vernal pools, the wood frog which is a super cool looking frog with interesting breeding biology and an awesome way of dealing with freezing temperatures. And you can learn all about it in this video and be sure to get out and enjoy nature in your backyard.